can't believe it. Look at all that blue up there. We had like almost 90,000 people, and I know 40,000 that were screaming for us. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Hello and welcome. Hotels.com invites you to travel back in time with the Dallas Cowboys to Super Bowl 12, January 15th, 1978 in New Orleans, where legendary announcer Vern Lundquist describes how the Cowboys' Doomsday 2 defense led them to a resounding 27-10 victory over the Denver Broncos for the franchise's second Lombardi Trophy. This is time traveling with America's team. The game against the Denver Broncos, a team known as the Orange Crush, would be the first Super Bowl to be hosted in the Superdome. And this was the first Super Bowl appearance ever for Denver as well. The Cowboys, though, had been here before, and they knew the bitter taste of defeat. We're already veterans of the Super Bowl because we, you know, collectively, we've lost one, Super Bowl 10, and we didn't want that to happen again. That was awful to be that close and lose a game. So I do remember we were really serious going into that game, and guys are working hard. There was a freshness. There was an up, uplift in, on the team mood. Needless to say, the Cowboys were ready. There was nothing that was going to stop them, particularly a Denver offense led by a former teammate, quarterback Craig Morton. Kind of a special treat. I'd like to introduce you to fellas. Craig Morton, Roger Staubach. Roger, this is Craig Morton. Hello, Mr. Staubach. I've met Craig before, I believe. <laughs> Have you met before? I didn't realize that. I, I, what I remember about that game in the locker room beforehand, just before we went out on the field, the whole room was just like, you could have heard a pin drop. And Coach Landry, came in the room, he walked in the room, he says, okay, let's have a good game. And we went out there and boom, that was it. <laughs> Craig had no chance. It, it, he just had no chance. He, there was no way he was gonna salvage anything. If, if he called any pass play that went past 2.5 seconds, you were gonna be on your back. And he was. We knew we had to pressure him, bless him, yeah, make him throw before he's ready. And uh, you don't win games with game plans, but I think the fact that we did pressure him, make him throw it before he's ready, I think that helped us. Well, I don't, I don't think um, the defense could have played any better. It, it was almost a perfect game. Offensively, we, uh, we had a good game. We didn't make any mistakes, but we watched our defense take over. The Dallas defense indeed made life miserable for Morton, with the quarterback saying afterward, they took away everything we had. Even when I audibled, their defense made an adjustment to the play I called. We wanted to blitz a lot against Craig because we knew Craig was not capable of moving very far. Uh, and so we were, you know, we were down on the ground drawing stuff on the ground on artificial turf. The Cowboys forced eight turnovers in the game with Morton throwing four interceptions, then a Super Bowl record. They also recorded four sacks. When Dallas opened up the scoring in the first quarter with a one-yard touchdown run by Tony Dorsett, those in the Cowboys' defense knew victory was theirs. On the sideline, we just kind of looked at each other and said, guys, that's all we need. We're on the board. That's how strong we felt about our defense that year. We were ready. You know, we were, we were ready both physically and mentally. There was no way we were losing that game. It was coming together right at that moment and right through that season. And I, I think we just, and we had the motivation. We came into that game ready to just, we we're going to beat anybody that showed up. The Cowboys eventually won the game handily, 27 to 10, behind the defense that held Denver to just 156 yards of total offense. With the constant pressure, Morton completed only eight of his 25 pass attempts. When it came time to vote for the game's MVP honor, the press contemplated giving the award to the entire defense. In the end, they settled on the first and still only co-MVPs of the Super Bowl. I remember, uh, you know, Harvin coming up to me on the sidelines, giving me a hug. He says, ah, we're the MVPs. But, you know, when I 
you know, I won the MVPs. I, you know, I thought it was a great honor, but you know, it's something I didn't didn't dwell on or think about. I mean, Randy and Harvey just were out of playing out of their minds, and they're, all the sacks and and tackles for losses and big plays were being made. Randy Hughes had a great game too. Martin is buried, lets it fly, intercepted. Cowboys pick it off at the 26-yard line. We could have had several MVPs in that game, but it's just that we were clicking on all cylinders and having fun. That fun extended long into the night with a celebration for the ages. The good times, though, were just beginning.